Now we're on to our second soil. Um, I wanted to mention real quick, in that last video, we had established that that um, soil was a loamy sand. So really, whenever you're looking at the different names of the soils, the different types of soils, um, that first one is going to tell you one of the characteristics. So on that one, it's loamy, which means that it's going to be a mixture of sand, silt, and clay. But then the next um, word is going to be what the predominant feature is. So that was a loamy sand. So what we're saying is that it's not a straight sand. It's a mixture. It's a loamy sand. It's a loamy soil. So it's a mixture of sand, silt, and clay, but it's predominantly sandy. And so now we're going to get into to two other soils that are going to go ahead and form a ribbon for us. And we'll be able to figure out, um, you know, some of those other characteristics. Okay. So this is our second soil. And um, again, and whenever you get these, whenever you get um, the soil out of these containers, you might want to go through there and just break up some of the larger aggregates. If you have some of the, the larger aggregates, go ahead and just break those up into, into individual grains, into soil, okay? Um, and just make sure that whenever you're texturing, you're texturing with as fine of a soil as you can get out of that, that container. So I'm gonna take another, let me get some of these bigger parts out. But again, um, you know, it says 25 grams. If you have a scale that says 25 grams, go for it. Um, but really you just need, need a handful and just get some of those broken up just like that. Okay, so there we've got our soil. It's pretty good. Not bad. Okay. And then we're going to start adding water drop by drop. And you can kind of even tell whenever we start, I mean, look at that, that's already starting to hold together so much better than the loamy sand. So that should give you a clue that we're dealing with something that has a higher clay content or a lower sand content. But see, look how that, I mean, there's very little um, mud, okay, on my hand. And we've got a nice little, that eyedropper's pretty cool. We need to use that again. Um, okay, so, Miss Tina. All right, so skipping the first one, because we did that already. Does the soil remain in a ball when squeezed? Yes. So yes. And on this one, this, this, I don't know. When I, when I learned it, we would bounce it in our hands, okay? And if it remained in a, in a ball, then that was really good. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to ribbon it. So place a ball of soil between thumb and forefinger, gently pushing the soil with the thumb, squeezing it upward into a ribbon. Form a ribbon of uniform thickness and width. Allow the ribbon to emerge and extend over the forefinger, breaking from its own weight. So the question is, does the soil form a ribbon? Okay, so does it form a ribbon? So now, again, you don't want it too wet. If you get it too wet, add some soil, keep on kneading it until you have just a ball. Then you're gonna take it in between your, your forefinger and your thumb, and you're just gonna start ribboning it out, okay? And so, I don't know what the best way to show you. Okay, so there's, there's a ribbon. It, it fell off by its own weight. So we'll do that again. I didn't measure it. But does, but does this ribbon, yes, this soil does form a ribbon. Okay. Okay, so there's that one. All right, so it fell off by its own weight. So now the next set of questions are about the length of the ribbon. Okay. So does the soil make a weak ribbon less than 2.5 centimeters long before breaking? Mm. It kind of seems to be. And so we were, so if you have, a, if you have your ruler, Okay, 2.5 centimeters is not terribly long. It's gonna be that long. So if we come over here and we start comparing, so that's shorter, that's shorter, that's shorter. That one is getting pretty close, but it wouldn't go over that 2.5 centimeter mark. Um, you can also use <laughs> the, your thumb, okay? From your tip of your thumb to um, the first knuckle is about two and a half, or yeah, two and a half centimeters. Again, that's not, if you don't have anything else, this is what you can go by. So that's shorter, that's shorter, that's getting up there. Okay, that's getting up there, but that's shorter. 
I would say primarily it is shorter, okay? We can do that again. Use my left hand this time, okay? So there's that, but you know, it, it'll ribbon, but it, once it gets out there, not quite two and a half centimeters, it's gonna start breaking. Um, so. All right, so we're establishing that it does make that weak ribbon less than 2.5 centimeters. So that's a yes on our sheet. So we're right here. So now we have to do this, uh, this feel method to figure out the grittiness. So we're moving down. Ooh, uh -huh. There go the lights. Down into this. Seriously. <laughs> Technical difficulties, we lost the lights. There we go. Okay, so we're just gonna follow it down this first column that it's on. So we're gonna establish, does it feel gritty, smooth, or neither gritty or smooth predominates. So we'll demonstrate that here. This is a little bit different of a method for that part. Okay, so you just have a little bit in the palm of your hand and we're gonna get it super wet. So this is where it gets a little bit messier. All right. Maybe gotten a little too wet. But then you're gonna start swirling it around, okay? And if it feels gritty, then you're gonna say it is a sandy loam. Mm -hmm. So if it feels gritty, we're gonna establish that it's a sandy loam. So does it feel gritty? Yes, there are some, and you can even see some of the little larger particles. Because the whole thing with sand is that they're, they're particles of soil that, that the naked eye can see. So you can see those, those gritty particles in there. So I'd say it is sandy. Okay. So that would be a yes. So we're saying that it's a sandy loam. Excellent. Excellent. For this. Nice. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right. All right. And we'll see you in a minute in the next video. Yes.